Americans and Americans to greet the Cavan and Terry teams as they walk onto the field. An early arrival was number one citizen of New York, mayor-born Mayor Bill O'Dwyer, who was received in his box by Mr. Dan O'Rourke, president of the GAA, Paddy O'Keefe, and Frank McCarty. The New York police band, the swirl of the kilts and the parade, they were something new to most people present. And following these star musicians came the men of Breffney, led by John Joe O'Reilly, and Ginny Lyon leading the pride of the kingdom, two fine bodies of men, cognizant of the fact that they were making history. And as I look down on this scene of splendor, the crowd and team do honor to the national anthem. Jim Farley is over there, but the stage is set. Mayor O'Dwyer throws in the ball and the game is on. Cavan are first to attack, but Terry settled down better in the early stages, and after a short bout in the defense, they go into the attack. Paddy Kennedy catches a nice one. He sends it across the goal mouth. Garvey is in position, but as he crashes to the net, the whistle goes to give him a free, which is sent over by Giga Connor for the first score of the game. Terry followers smiled. Later they laughed, but as the hour went on, the story changed. Back came Terry, and Garvey, in one of his many solo runs, outpaced the defense and sent in a hard goal with the score then. Terry won one, Cavan no score. This was soon to be changed, and while Ty, John Joe O'Reilly, Brady and company worked their way towards the Kerry goal, Donahoe was awarded a free, and Cavan starts their total. But it was still a case of Kerry on top. Garvey started a solo run, sent the ball across to Frank O'Keefe, who tussled for it in the air with Paddy Smith. O'Keefe falls to the ground, he passes it out to Dan Kavner, and then Doonan of Kavner in and clears out a magnificent clearance. Back come Terry again. Eddie Dowling dodges and battles his way past the Cavan defense and sends a rasper to the net. Cavan have their moment now and the Kerry backs with their baseball caps are under pressure. A clearance by Johan paves the way for a Garvey solo and yet another Kerry goal. By this time, many fans were wondering just how Cavan got to the final. They soon found out but it was Kerry with a Kennedy point who scored next. A close in free gives Cavan's man of the match, Peter Donahoe, another point. Out in midfield, Duke of Cavan solos his way along the field. He passes the ball into Ty. He gets it back again, but as he starts another cavern attack, Jimmy Perry clears out with another point. Players watch anxiously as Kerry suffered a severe blow and John Kerry O'Donnell escorts the injured Dowling to the line. Cavan are really going in style and showing pace and combination and they the Kerry line. Dan O'Keefe seems the hard one from Donahue at the expense of a point. Then Stafford finishes the Higgins shot to the net. Cavan are indeed jubilant now, but more is to come. And as Higgins works his way through into a position for another goal, the surgeon takes the lead. John Joe O'Reilly starts yet another cavern attack. Ty collects the ball, sends it into Higgins. Higgins dodges past one man, sends to McDyer. McDyer gets ready to shoot, but he's foiled. He gets the ball again, and back it goes to Donahue, but Dan O'Keefe is not easily beaten in the carry goal. 
And so, a few moments later, halftime came with Cavan holding on to the lead. And the score standing, Cavan 2-5, Kerry 2-4. The players left the field of the interval and we enjoyed the music of the band. Terry, we're all out to level things after the interval. But the cabin defense was stunned. Time and time again, they repelled an attack. Star of these appearances was Doonan. Cavan swung back into the offensive again. And following a free, Donahoe did the honors once again. That's Terry, we're not beaten. And as they hand passed from O'Keefe to O'Connor, Giga Connor was fouled. And from the flea, he sent over for another point. It was hard, fast football after that, with Cavan doing all they could to hold their lead and to carry all out to tear it down. Yes, it was great stuff, with the play going from one end to the other. At this stage, it was any game, and indeed anything could happen. Duke had the match to himself for a few moments as he went away off on his own. A brilliant bout of hand passing with Duke, Stafford, McDyer and Dunhill produced another point for the North. And Jerry Arthur smiles as he waves his flag. Again, Cavan came into the attack with Higgins on the scoring mark once more. Four points divided the sides now. Cavan 2-11, Kerry 2-7. The kingdom fought back. And in a welter of excitement, they crowded round the Cavan goal. O'Keefe got the ball. He sent it back to Teddy Sullivan, who took a shot, but it hit the crossbar. For it was only a matter of seconds until referee Martin O'Neill blew his final whistle. And so ended the All-Ireland final of 1947 with Cavan the champion. The crowd came out to cheer off their heroes. And... With Cavan glorious and happy in victory, and Kerry brilliant in defeat, the greatest chapter in Irish sporting history came to an end. What about the hard pitch uh, and the heat in September in New York? It, 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 it was pretty 